Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. The Flame 2026 release brought us a significantly redesigned type node with more than a few new features and quality of life improvements. And both the 2026.1 and .2 updates have continued to upgrade it even further. In this video, we'll be covering where to find the type node, learning about the interface, and learning about how the new font system works. We can find the type tool in Desktop Tools under Composite, in Timeline as Timeline FX, and inside of Batch as a node. One of the biggest changes from the legacy text node is the lack of an edit button, meaning we no longer need to go into a separate module in order to modify any of the type node parameters. While this does make for a tremendous quality of life improvement on a number of levels, it does also mean that many of the keyboard shortcuts used in the legacy text node have changed to align with existing batch and timeline keyboard shortcuts. In the type nodes node prefs tab, the default and recommended anti-aliasing setting is hardware anti-aliasing, but we can also use software anti-aliasing with this drop down here. In the bottom left corner of the viewport, we have the option to toggle between interactive mode, which turns off any anti-aliasing, motion blur, or shadow blur, and Live Preview Mode, which accurately represents the output of the node, including any anti-aliasing. Back in the main type node area, on the left is the Layers list where we manage our type layers. We can add a layer with this button in the center or with this dropdown on the right, giving us the option of creating a text layer with a specific justification of left, center, or right, or to add a roll or crawl. The other way to add a layer is by double-clicking in the viewport where a text layer is added with the center justification underneath our cursor. These layers can be reordered by dragging them here in the layer list, and we have some more granular control of layer order here in the gear menu. This eye icon toggles visibility, and this delete button deletes the selected layer. We can select a layer either in the layer list or in the viewport. When a layer is selected and we're in select mode, the text has a gray box around it. We can drag layers around in the viewport to place them here in this mode, but when we double click a layer, again, either in the layer list or in the viewport, we enter edit mode indicated by the red box around our text. To exit edit mode, we either click off the layer in the viewport or hit escape. When we select two or more layers with either Shift Select or Control or Command Select here in the layer list, we can group them using the gear menu, allowing us to move multiple layers at once with ease, although we are not able to edit text when a layer is grouped. We can ungroup layers by selecting them, heading to the gear icon, and selecting Ungroup Selected Layers. Under this font section, the Change button brings up the new Select Font widget. It can be moved so we can better see the viewport, and it can be resized to whichever size we need. This font list is no longer limited by the opt Autodesk fonts location, and instead is now linked to the operating system's font book with new support for TrueType and Adobe fonts. The search bar at the top allows us to filter down the list to only show what we've searched. Hovering our mouse over a font displays a preview of what the currently selected characters or type layer looks like with that font. A font family can be set here explicitly, but it can also be changed outside of the select font widget in the dropdown just below the font name. When we encounter a node or segment with a font that's missing, we're met with this error message letting us know the name of the missing font and the fact that it's been replaced with the default discrete. The color fill of the font as well as the name of the font and its family all show up red, indicating that it's missing. On the right side of each font are three icons, a star used to favorite a font, moving it to the favorites tab, an eye used to hide a font from the font list, and a tag to open up the font tags screen, giving us the option of assigning words that we can use to filter down the font list. If we head to the preferences under user and fonts, it's here that we can manage the favorites, hidden and tagged fonts. Local fonts are fonts that are available on the operating system. 
Shared fonts are defined in the sysconfig.cfg file via a path under the Configuration Folders and Font section, and are meant to be centralized fonts accessible across multiple machines. Project fonts are a special type of font category that allows us to replace a font everywhere it's used across a project. If we head back to the Preferences under Project and Fonts, we have this Project Fonts section with up to 50 indexes and a font list. When we select a blank entry in the font column or hit Add at the bottom, the Select Font widget appears and we can associate a particular font with our selected index. Once that's set, the next time we bring up the Select Font widget and head to the Project Font tab, we'll find the font and corresponding index that we set in the Preferences. When we set a font this way, we see the index here next to the font name indicating that it's a project font. Changing that font in the project font preferences changes wherever it's used throughout the project, whether it's on the desktop, in batch, or even in the library. Project fonts are not for every occasion, but when set up correctly in the right circumstances, they can make rapid changes easy and seamless. In the next video, we'll be covering the basic type node controls. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. Until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.